What's going on guys? I'm excited about today's video because I'm going to be reviewing the Mamiya RB67 120 medium format film camera. That's right, you heard me, film camera. I'm gonna be showing you guys a couple sample images from when I went out and I shot with my wife. And I'm also gonna give you three tips that I found to be very useful when shooting with this bad boy. So let's just jump into it. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jonathan Moore. I'm a photographer and a filmmaker, and I like to make videos like these for other photographers, filmmakers, and creative entrepreneurs out there who are trying to build a life on their terms so they can get it how they live. So like I said, I'm very excited about today's video because I'm going to be talking about and showing you guys a few images from when I went out and shot with the Mamiya RB67. Now it just so happens that this is a 120 medium format film camera. So if you're clicked on this video, then you probably already have an idea of film. You're already shooting film. Rarely does anybody start with 120, but maybe that might be the case. So, hey, you're welcome to join in and, and learn a little bit about uh, shooting film. So with this particular camera right here, the Mamiya RB67, uh, I had it sitting around my place for a couple of years actually, and I got the camera from my dad. Now, the only reason that I haven't used it up until this point is because I really haven't been shooting film as much as I used to when I first started. But lo and behold, I find out that there is a one hour photo film processing place like right around the corner from me. So you know I had to go investigate it. You know I had to check it out. And it turns out that it was true. Kind of. It really wasn't a one hour photo. It was more like one day. But either way, they still develop 35 millimeter film. And yes, they develop 120 c41 color processing 120 film they develop as well and if you have black and whites they will develop your negative so that's pretty cool as well too so anyway let's just jump into it so the reason i picked this camera up and i actually shot it was because i found the film place around the corner so the uh, film that i ended up using was the kodak porta 400 speed film and the reason that i went with 400 speed films because you know that's just general rule of thumb it's not too fast it's not too slow um it was like 12 dollars for the actual roll they come in three packs but you know me and being cheap only bought one roll so you know that's me but next time i'll buy a couple so if you're looking for that i'm going to leave the link for that in the description below now if you never used this camera before let me give you a quick introduction of how mine is set up so once again um, the lens that I have on here is a Hoya 77 millimeter lens. There's no particular reason why I have that lens. It's just the lens that my dad had on there. I have a 120 uh, film back on here as well. Um, I also have a Polaroid back, but I don't have that on there right now. And what I like about this back is that you have your landscape and you can twist it and you can also shoot portrait as well. Also, you'll notice you have these little knobs right here. This is to focus the camera. And then you have your viewfinder up here. Bada bing, bada boom. You have your little magnifying glass right there. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, and uh, you're ready to shoot. All right, so let's jump into my three tips. So tip number one, this camera is pretty, pretty heavy. It can weigh on you. You better have your muscles up. Now, I know they have some different grips for them, but I don't have that type of a grip. And basically I would have to shoot this handheld. So tip number one is if you can always use a tripod. So the reason that you wanna have a tripod is that this camera is pretty heavy. This bad boy can start to have some weight, some pounds it can wear on you if you're carrying it around. Now, depending on the shooting conditions, if it's super bright and you have a fast shutter speed, you know, it's not maybe as much of a concern trying to get a sharp image. But if you're shooting when I shot, which was around the golden hour, my shutter speeds weren't super fast. So I really wanted to make sure that I was getting a sharp, crisp image and I didn't want any of that handshake. So try to use a tripod whenever you can. Also, a little caveat to that is keep in mind that shooting film is still a very expensive process. Like I said, it cost me about $12 for the roll, and then it cost me about $15 to get it developed and processed. That was to get the roll prints and a CD, which is nice, but who uses CDs anymore? So all in all, you know, it was about, what, 27 bucks, and I got 10 shots out of this roll, all right? 10, I think, good shots out of the roll because I messed one of them up. 
So tip number two, get a light meter app. So the light meter app that I got on my phone is called Lux. It's L-U-X, really simple light meter app. You just kind of set, you set your aperture, your ISO, your shutter speed, whatever, and then you just kind of point it, you point it right at the subject like you're taking a picture, boom. You get your uh, aperture settings and you know what? It worked out pretty good. As you can tell from the pictures that I'm showing you here, um, you can tell that you know, I was getting a really good light reading and you know, not all of the pictures were super sharp, which is something that I have to really work on. But um, I was able to get a nice, well exposed image that I can take into post process. All right, now tip number three is just a bonehead move that I ended up making. You have to pay attention when you are advancing the film, okay? So listen, right here you have your 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 button right here to release your shutter. So uh, let me see here. Um, uh, so you have a metal plate here, right? A guard that comes out. Now your film can be exposed right through your lens. Take a picture, boom, you hear it? And now you reset the shutter so you can take another picture. Now this is what I was doing. I'm taking pictures, right? Boom. But here, check this out. On the back of the 120 roll, there's a advance here. So the first like five pictures that I took, right? I like just exposed one picture like five times because I thought that by, you know, resetting that shutter here, I was advancing a film, but in all honesty, you had to, re you had to advance it from here. So take your picture, which is cool because you can double, triple expose if you want to, but take your picture and then you can advance from the back. All right guys, so before we leave it off, let me talk about some pros on this camera, some of the things that I like. One of the things that I like is that you get a nice big square negative. It's actually not a square, it's like a four by three, but it's a nice big large negative that you get. You can bring in a post process, chop it up in Lightroom, make it look really, really nice. One of the other pros that I like is how you actually compose your pictures and you look down and through it and so it's kind of like it, it's a whole different experience it gives you a new style of composition it's just it's really cool to kind of take the time and really put your pictures together because remember you're only going to get like 10 shots also one of the things that i love about these images is that they still have like some of that negative dust on them so that's really cool i love that texture and feel before back in the day when i was shooting film i would have got rid of that but now i want to keep it because it gives me a nice little sense of nostalgia so if any of this was helpful to you hopefully it was give me a thumbs up hopefully you guys Get your hands on a medium format film camera. It doesn't have to be, uh, be the Mamiya RB67, but if it is, that's awesome. I think the price of them is around like 250 US I've been seeing online. So, you know, if you can swing it, if that's something that you're interested in, if you are an old school shooter like myself and still love film, it's a great buy and pick up. Also guys, I will be leaving links in the description so you can grab some of the presets that you've seen here. Um, I'll be adding more to the page and yeah, so check it out. Hopefully this video was helpful. If so, give me a like and uh, until the next time, make sure you subscribe, drop me a comment. Let me know where you guys are at on your creative journey right now and uh, signing out. This is your man, Jonathan Moore. Peace.